Hello and welcome back. We're on the home straight here with our one sweater knit along and I hope you have been knitting away and enjoying it, posting your pictures, doing all the fun stuff for a knit along. Um, we're nearly there. We've got a body, we've knit some sleeves. If you're knitting a cardigan with me, we're ready to work that button band, which can be a little bit tricky. So we're going to talk through it. Um, one of the things that is helpful before you begin your button band, block your knitting. Just give it a nice block. Let it be flat and even as possible before you begin to pick up stitches and do all that work along this edge. Um, make it as easy as possible so it's nice and flat as it will be and it won't roll as much. Um, it'll also give you a chance to double check your gauge. I am going to go off piste slightly from the pattern. I have some top tips for you today about how to work the button band without slavishly following the uh, numbers in the pattern. Um, although I have the pattern here and you know it's great, it gives us the exact numbers to pick up along each edge. The only problem with that is that perhaps you've made the sweater longer, perhaps you've made it shorter. Um, and then all of those numbers uh, are no longer relevant to the, the piece that you have. So I have a, a technique for you to never go wrong with the numbers that you're picking up. And it has to do with the proportion. So the proportion of stitches to rows. In our pattern, we have a tension of 21 stitches and 31 rows per 10 centimeter four inch square. That's measured after blocking with our stockinette stitch. And um, it's worth double checking to just make sure that that's actually the tension that you have after you block. But what's nice about the tension as given is that it works for almost all stockinette stitch. You can almost always pick up a proportion of two stitches for every three rows. If we just reduce that down to its um, basic numbers here, we have 21 stitches, which you know we divide by 10, we can get two stitches, 31 rows, divide by 10, we get three rows. That's our basic proportion. That means that along all the um, edges where we have, uh, we're working on the rows, we know that we can pick up two stitches for every three rows along these edges. Sometimes you get um, a big curve for a neckline or something like that, and then you need to think quite carefully about that proportion. It might be slightly different. For this one, it's a relatively, I'm not too worried about picking up two to three stitches, uh, two stitches for every three rows along this edge as well. One thing that we will do differently is, obviously when you get to um, the top, of your, your sleeve, for example, and your back neck, you're no longer working on rows. So you're not picking up two stitches for every three rows. You'll just be picking up stitches from stitches. So you pick up one for each. So for every little stitch I have here, I'm gonna pick up one stitch in there. And the other slight deviation I'm gonna make from standard procedure is um, down here at the end, right at the edges. Uh, some of you may have picked up stitches from button bands before and this edge can sometimes create a little um, a little dip in here because you know you're you're working on smaller needles, you're working um, a rib fabric which has a tendency to pull in and it might create um, uh, a little curve in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up a couple of extra stitches along this tiny little bit here and I'm going to make sure I pick up a stitch right at the bottom here. I'm going to pull this out and actually my first stitch is going to be right in there and I'm going to give it a couple of extra in there. So those are the things that I'm doing slightly differently. Um, I have here some needles that are smaller than the needles I worked the body with and I have them on the longest cord I could find. Now if you're knitting an adult cardigan, you'll need a really long curve to pick up the stitches because you're picking them up all the way around here. And that is a lot of stitches. Make sure that you have enough room on your cable to hold all those stitches before you get started. 
So let's do it. I'm going to pick up with my yarn here and my knitting from the right side. I'm looking at the right side. So I'm beginning, this is like uh, the right side of your cardigan as well. I'm going to go in with the tip of the needle and I kind of hold my yarn in a, in a crochet fashion to pick up stitches. You know, some people hate picking up stitches. They think, oh, it's like this necessary evil. I find it really satisfying personally. I think it's really nice um, to pick up stitches that then look so nice and tidy. And yeah, I, you know, I love it. So I'm gonna pick up my next stitch from a full stitch in. I'm going under both legs of the stitches. I'm not splitting them like halfway through like that. Um, so I'm going to go in here underneath both legs of that stitch as well and under here and so I've picked up three stitches along this edge and now I'm going to start my proportion, my two to three proportion. So I'm going to pick up two stitches, one, make sure I go under both legs, two, and then I skip one. So I just tease out a little bit and make sure that Here's the space, the next space. I'm going to skip that one and go into the following space and go one and then two and then I skip one. So I'm going to do that all the way around and I'm going to make sure I have a multiple of four stitches working all the way around. And because I really love it when things are nice and symmetrical, I'm going to make sure I have an extra two stitches so that I can have two knit stitches at the bottom of this edge and two knit stitches at the bottom of this edge. So in actuality, I'm picking up a stitch, a multiple of four stitches plus two there. I'll need to do a little bit of, um, you know, fudging it when I get all my stitches on the needle just to make sure I have the right number. I might need to pick up an extra stitch, might need to work two stitches together so that I get the right proportion. but that is not at all a problem and you will never see it. I will get back to you as soon as I have picked up all those stitches and I can show you. I've worked a couple of rows on my button band and I'm ready to place some buttonholes. And um, much like with the picking up of stitches, there is an exact number of stitches to work in order to uh, find the space for your buttonhole in the pattern which is fabulous if you have the exact number of stitches that you've picked up for your button band. If, however, you've made alterations, as I have, then what you want to do is find another way of creating your evenly spaced, um, beautifully placed buttonholes. And I would recommend having a go like this. So, <clears throat> excuse me. We have this edge and this is the side we're going to put our buttonholes on and the, the bit where it changes direction from the increases that we made for the neck to the straight of the body is a great place for your first buttonhole. So if I look closely, that is right here and I'm going to place a removable stitch marker right there. That's going to tell me where my first buttonhole is going to be. And then I have a few more here and I'm going to evenly distribute them. Um, I'm deciding to put in four buttons, so I need four buttonholes and I want to evenly distribute them along the edge. The last one I want to be um, just a, a couple of stitches from the bottom edge so I know where that one goes. And I'm going to place my marker in there. And then I have two more and I'm just going to eyeball it and have a look. And then I'll count to make sure I have an even number of stitches here, here and here. Make any adjustments necessary. And then I'm going to work around, because my, my yarn is here, I have a wrong side row next, to this space, work a buttonhole to this space, to this space, and I'll know exactly where they're going to be 
and that they're in the place that I want them to be. Um, if you're working a cardigan for a woman who is maybe a bit more busty, then having uh, a buttonhole uh, right at the kind of fullest bit of the bust point is good because that will be a space where obviously um, the the gaping in the button band is very likely. So um, and even you know moving the, the the buttonholes a little bit closer together in that space so that you have a little bit more um, support in that area. Is, is not a bad thing. And if it's just a couple of, of stitches, you're not going to be able to see that. So don't worry too much about that, um, you know, not being the exact number of stitches apart from the other buttonholes. It's, it's actually a very subtle difference there. Um, but in a little baby one, it doesn't matter very much. So I'm going to work around and see you when I get to that space. I've worked to two stitches before my first marker and uh, our instructions call for a, a two stitch buttonhole. So we'll be casting off two stitches and then on the following row, casting on two stitches to cover that. Um, that is a perfectly good way to make a buttonhole. I think that that's um, great for a larger button. We're working on a small little cardigan and it will have relatively small little buttons. So an equally good buttonhole option is a decrease with a yarn over. Um, and if that's too large as well, you can always do the decrease on this round or row and on the way back, pick up a stitch so that it's not as big as a yarn over. But let's do it as instructed. So I'm going to cast off one stitch and then I'm going to go over the button marker to cast off two stitches and that will be my buttonhole. And I'm going to work to in pattern to the next one as well. Um, maintaining that rib I won't miss it on the way back because there's a big gap. And then purl and I'm going to knit, pass one over, knit, cast one off. Um, and I'm going to do that a couple more times and then I shall see you when I'm ready to cast them back on. I finished my row and I'm working back to the first buttonhole here and I'm just going to cast on two stitches with a backwards loop. Cast on one, two, just to fill that gap and then I continue on in pattern and I'm going to do that all the way across and there is a space for my button. I've worked two stitch buttonholes for my cardigan, but in case you find that that is a little bit too large for your buttons, um, working a one stitch buttonhole is, is perfectly good too. So if you start, um, I have a purl and a knit stitch. I'm looking at the right side. I work a yarn over and then my decrease. So I've made an increase and a decrease. That will give you another little hole, but slightly smaller than the two stitch buttonhole. And it's, um, it's quite tidy with the decrease kind of covering up the, the purl stitch next to it um, and continuing that knit uh, column. So another option if you want a smaller buttonhole.